Hello friends, Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. And today I want to talk with you about the five reasons why you shouldn't keep African cichlids and the five reasons why you should. So um, let's go ahead and uh, get right into it. I think you'll like these and I think you'll probably think of some to add to each of the lists and be sure to add, add those to the comments below. Let's go ahead and get into it. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that, uh, that sub button and uh, the bell and the thumbs up and uh, let's keep the channel growing. We're just about to go over uh, 45,000 if we haven't already and uh, let's go uh, and uh, just drive it up over 50. <laughs> Why not, right? So uh, thank you to all of you who have subscribed. Your support is very appreciated. All right, let's get into today, today's subject. So you know me, I like lists. So I made a list here and it could have been a lot longer once I got going. Here are the reasons why you shouldn't. Let's start with the negative and then we'll get into the positive. Here are the, reason, the reasons why you shouldn't get into African cichlids. Uh, number one is, is cost. And I'm not just talking about the cost of getting a fully grown, uh, colored up uh, male African cichlid, which can run you 45, 50, 60 dollars. If you're buying them from somebody uh, far away, you're gonna have to pay for shipping. You could be up in the range of a uh, hundred dollars for one fish that's not inconceivable but that's not the cost i'm talking about that is of, of significance but the cost i'm referring to is the, the fact that you're going to become completely addicted to these fish and you're going to want one of of all of them you're going to see a a, a a tangerine tiger a taiwan reef and you're going to say i've got to have that fish you're going to see a a, a malawi trout and a, uh, a hawk or a sand diver, and you're gonna, man, I've got to get that fish, an autopharynx tetrastigma. I, I, I have to have that one right now. You're gonna, it, it, it's very easy to get uh, just sort of almost obsessed. Next thing you know, you have a, you know, 500 to a thousand dollar collection of fish. So uh, that, that is the part of the cost uh, factor. Plus, you're gonna need uh, quarantine tanks, hospital tanks, uh, grow out tanks, because sometimes you'll get a fish that's a little bit too small to, to throw in the main tank. So you have to let them put on some size somewhere else and on and on. So there's, there are costs involved. Aggression, number two, aggression. Aggression's a big factor. A lot of folks don't have the, uh, they, just don't, they just don't have the stomach for it, you know, to watch uh, a beautiful fish get torn up overnight, you know, you're keeping a good eye on your tank, you think you have control over it, and uh, everybody seems to be getting along, and the next morning you wake up and a fish has been torn to shreds. And this is heartbreaking. And some of us don't have uh, the, the stomach for it. And especially after you, you, know, you, you paid 100 bucks to get that fish to your house, and you know, after a week, your, your $15 uh, of, you know, electric blue from, from Petco killed it. And so, uh, it can be very, very frustrating. So aggression is not for everybody. And the, probably the number one reason I hear for people uh, leaving, leaving uh, African cichlids as the species that they, you know, as the type of fish they're keeping is because of aggression. And they go into you know planted, uh, you know nano tanks and stuff. So it's like they go the other extreme. Uh, size uh, size of the tank needed that's number three size of the tank needed because these fish put on a tremendous amount of size uh, at least the kind of African cichlids that I enjoy like your like your trouts your hawks your venusis these fish get you know they, they become a beefy 10 to 15 to even even larger in some cases uh, inches and uh, you're gonna you're going to need a, a tank that is minimum six feet across, ideally more, and a minimum 125 gallons, and again, ideally more. So uh, this is a 210, and I have people telling me that these fish should go into the 300 because it's not big enough. So you, you kind of get what I'm saying. Now that involves a lot of cost, uh, a, a, lot of, uh, a, a lot of effort, you know, th you know, things of that nature. So, so the size of the tank needed, a lot of folks just don't have that size or don't have a floor that can support a tank that heavy or other factors. So 
uh, African cichlids are not for them. Uh, the amount of filtration needed. Uh, some folks don't want to spend that much in the electricity and the equipment to provide the proper water turnover uh, for African cichlids. They're very messy. They're, they're uh, vor voracious. I mean, they're, they're big eaters. They eat a lot. They want a lot of protein, so they make a lot of waste, and that means you need to have a lot of, uh, a lot of filtration and uh, you know, a lot of water turnover, a lot of water that's going through your, your, uh, you know, your mechanical filtration to keep that water crystal clear. So that's going to involve you know, electrical costs, equipment costs, and also the replacement costs because that equipment will fail and need to be replaced from time to time. The, um, the other factor which, which comes into play is the amount of food. And if you're buying high quality food, let's say you're buying Sarah, uh, you're buying Extreme, you're buying Northfin, right? You're buying some of these um, cleaner, lower phosphate, higher protein, less fillers, uh, no dyes, no soy, right? If you're buying high quality food, you're gonna pay uh, good money. And uh, you know, Pisces Energetics comes to mind. I mean, these are high quality foods and these fish will eat a lot of it. And as they get bigger, they'll eat even more. So again, that's a cost factor. Uh, compare that to a, um, for example, I have a community tank. I just put just a little, little pinch, a few, a few, uh, just a few flakes or a few teeny pellets, and that's it. That's it, they're, they're, they're satiated, they're, they're, they're full. One other thing that, uh, that is a, uh, for some people, a negative with African cichlids is, is the amount of work needed if you want to keep cichlids, you've got to really stay on top of, of the aquarium because they, they create so much waste. And so because of that, you're going to need uh, time and effort. So uh, some folks don't want to put that much time. Some people want a, a planted, uh, heavily planted, lightly stocked aquarium that requires maybe a little touch up once a month. If, if that's sort of your style or, or your life circumstances, uh, don't allow for a lot of time, that might be the right tank for you. A tank like this one here uh, requires, uh, I'd say an hour or two at minimum, minimum a week. And that, that includes uh, uh, you know, giving it a, a water change. I mean, draining a, a lot of water from a tank this size, unless you're using pumps, that can be faster. But then filling it up, if you're going from the tap, you can only fill it up so fast. So uh, uh, there's time, there's time involved and, and work effort right? Opening up canisters, working on sumps, uh, cleaning out hang on back filters that are just mucked up in one week, you know, one week, two weeks. Uh, you know, if you're using hang on backs, they can get mucked up in a week, right? Uh, with big fish producing a lot of waste. Now, let's, let's, let's get into the positive. Let's get into the, uh, the, the, the five reasons why you should, you should keep African cichlids. And these are, these are just five of the reasons why I keep them. And number one is color. Uh, the color on these fish is crazy. It's crazy. It, it's, uh, uh, you know, you hear folks saying, are those saltwater fish? Uh, very few freshwater fish will get that comment, are these, are these saltwater fish? You get a tremendous amount of color. You also get a tremendous amount of variety, variety in both shape and color. So, uh, you know, something I really love, you, you, compare a, um, you compare a Malawi hawk to a, uh, to a trout, uh, right? You have, you have very different body shapes. Uh, if you, you, know, you look at an eye biter, compare an eye biter to a, a bicolor 500, very, very different shape, very different, and very different temperament, right? So color, and uh, that's really number one and two, color and size. They, they, they get a good, a good size where they are not afraid or intimidated by you. They actually will come up to the glass, they'll interact with you, they will look you right in the eye, they, uh, uh, you know, they become these, these sort of water puppies, the way people describe their Oscar sometimes, uh, you know, or their flower horn, they'll say it's a water puppy because it's a big fish that actually responds to you. It, 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 it comes up when, you, when you're around, it follows you around, and uh, th that's fun. You can also hand feed them and have them latch onto your finger, and that's always a lot of fun. So uh, size and variety. So we have three so far, color, size, variety, and uh, in interaction, actually I've given you all my first four already, the, the interaction uh, aspect is huge. And, and, and they're not like fish that 
that immediately go and hide and you don't see them when you're around. On the contrary, they rush to the front and, uh, and that kind of interaction is a lot of fun. The other one, which is something I'm not into, and this would be, I guess, technically number five, uh, the, the, the thing I'm not in, that I'm not into currently, but is fascinating, is their their uh, breeding their breeding behavior, uh, being mouth brooders, you know, holding holding you know, the female hold, the dance that they do, and then the female scooping up the eggs and holding them in in, in their mouth right for for uh, you know what four weeks or something like that almost four weeks, and you know 20 days and and um, and, and then the fry you know getting spit out. Or, or the ability to take the eggs out and put them in something like a tumbler and then and then have them hatch that way. So it, it's it's a, it's just a fascinating thing to to watch to watch happen. So um, it, another good reason to keep them. Uh, a word of warning: if you keep African cichlids, uh, prepare to have lots of tanks. Prepare to uh, keep graduating into larger and larger tanks. I started with a 29 gallon and. Um, now I have, you know, my small tanks are, fit, are well, I got a 29, I got a, ten, uh, a five uh, for uh, a beta, but I have an eight gallon for a little uh, planted tank. But also, but the main tanks are, are 90, uh, 255s, a 210, and a 300 gallon. So, uh, you know, be ready because you're gonna need a lot of space. You're gonna need, a, and you're gonna want bigger and bigger tanks. You're gonna get multi-tank syndrome, I guarantee it. And uh, there's no cure for that and it's a wonderful disease to have. So, so there you have it. Those are the reasons why you shouldn't and why you should uh, get into African cichlids. They're just simply amazing. And uh, what do you think? What are the reasons why you keep them or what, what are the reasons why you don't keep them or stop keeping them? Comment below, I'd like to hear it. And uh, we'll talk about this and a lot more at the Saturday Cichlids and Coffee live stream. And, uh, great group of people talking about everything from filtration to substrate to lighting to fish to everything all aspects of fish keeping so join us there if you'd like to support the channel apart from being here and viewing the videos consider becoming a member of the garage gang a patreon and uh, those monthly memberships really help and a big shout out to all my patreon members and to the cichlid shack in tempe arizona for being a sponsor of the channel and also to the aquarium co-op for all their help and a big thank you to, um, uh, to Jason Adams for the t-shirt. Him and his wife, I, I uh, was able to speak with them briefly at Aquashella in Orlando, and I scored a, uh, a primetime aquatics t-shirt, which I love. Thank you, everybody. Hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.